whilst I call this a four jaw chuck alternative, I do think having a conventional chuck as well is the best approach. It will though do everything that a conventional chuck will do and many things more. Another factor is that it will take much larger work pieces than a comparable sized conventional chuck as will be obvious as we go through this video. Here we see the chuck with one jaw on its side comparing the two types of add-on jaw, their purpose being explained later. Here we see the purpose of the shorter add-on jaw, as they support a relatively thin item. This also showing how the jaws can be moved to place the workpiece in the required position. The chuck can easily be set up with just two jaws, which I find beneficial occasionally. In this case, the part being held needed a hole with a flat bottom and almost as deep as the workpiece's thickness. Boring it on the lathe was the only option. Now we see that the chuck cannot hold small parts with the main jaws and then how this is overcome by the addition of longer add-on jaws. This sequence shows a method to set the jaws to suit the size of the workpiece. Small adjustments are though still possible using the flexibility of the jaw pad. We see from this setting how large diameters are held. Of course, only for relatively thin parts, say up to 15mm thick. Note how the workpiece rests on the main jaws. The flexibility of the add-on jaws make it possible to finally centralise and secure the workpiece. Five slides follow showing actual tasks. There is though an unexpected facility when holding round items as shown in the first slide. With there being two workpiece securing screws, it is possible to make the jaw pads tilt, enabling a workpiece to be set to run true both next to the jaw and at its end. The two workpiece securing screws referred to in the last slide can be seen better on this slide. 